This Maya Graph Editor tutorial for beginners will teach you how to smooth your animation in Maya and how to fix stuttering animation in Maya. Let's go! My name is Nick Mabry, your 3D coach, professional Maya animator, and today we are finally going into one of the most powerful parts of Maya for animators, and that is the graph editor. This thing has saved my butt so many times. It's so helpful, and it looks like a big bowl of spaghetti, but you don't have to be intimidated by it. We're gonna go over it together. So if you are a subscriber, and you joined us last week, you'll know that we have this juice box animation here. He's kind of like marching around. He's looking pretty happy. You know, it looks pretty good, but applying a little graph editor polish to this, really gonna make it good. So let's do that. I will stop this animation and go to Windows, Animation Editors, Graph Editor. Yours might be a floating window, it might be somewhere else, but hey, if you click and hold this window and we drag it down, till we see that little blue line, I think it's blue, and let go, it'll dock into our Maya. And we can kinda minimize that a little bit. And now it won't be in front of anything, it won't be in our way. This is a great workflow if you only have the one monitor to work with. And that's what we're working with today. So right away, you can see this thing's totally blank, totally empty, kinda useless. That's because we don't have anything selected. As soon as we start selecting our curves, and remember last week, we turned all of our selection sets off except for NURBS curves, our control curves. And when we start selecting those curves, we're gonna see we start graphing. We start getting splines. We start getting tangents and keyframes. Now, if I select this whole thing and I hover my mouse over the graph editor, if I hit A on my keyboard, I will frame all. So that's A for frame all. And then I can hold my alt button on my keyboard and right click on my mouse to zoom in and out, middle click to pan. And it's hard to see what's going on because a lot of these little spaghettis are really close together. Well, I can also scale this. So if I hold shift and alt on my keyboard, then click and hold the right mouse button, I'll get that icon and then I drag up and down. And that's gonna scale it vertically then I can pan back in and you can also scale it out horizontally if you'd like and again holding shift and alt hold shift and alt hold a right mouse click and then just drag right and left and as you get the as you start and while you're still getting the hang of this you'll probably mess up which uh which axis you end up scaling it in but just keep at it it took me a long time so no worries here what does this stuff mean let me tell you let's select our main node our base node our god node right here it's called base control and look in our graph editor you'll notice that we have translate x just like in our channel box editor we have translate y just like in our channel box editor. So you can see these values in our graph editor is just another way of controlling what we have in our channel box, which is also just another way of controlling that curve in here with our move and rotate tools, scale and stuff like that. Same way as editing them using numbers. Ooh, that was a bad idea. Set that back to zero. You'll see that when I select each value, it only shows the curve for that value. And it just so happens we don't have any values in X, Y, or Z. They're all zero. The only value that we changed here is our left and right value. And so now we can see actual movement, actual change in that graph. So let me translate this for you. So right here on this keyframe, if we select it, we can look here. And this is frame one, and this is our value. So our left, right on frame one, has a value of 2.7. And then on our left right control on frame four, it has a value of 1.6, which is a lower value than 2.7, which means it's going down 2.7 and down to 1.6. And we can see that because our graph is going down, it's lowering the value, it's going closer to zero. This thicker line is zero. So we keep going, we keep going. Right here, we're at zero which is exactly where we have that breakdown where everything's kind of hunched over. And then we go past zero on frame 13. We're at negative 2.7, which is the exact opposite of frame one at 2.7. So obviously he's on the opposite foot. And then we look at the rest of our loop 
and it goes right back, which is great because now our last frame equals our first frame. So that is the information that that curve is telling us. And it is the same for every single curve in here. This looks like spaghetti. It looks like nonsense until we start looking at things individually. If we look at rotate Z, we're at 4.9 and then we're going down right so this is neutral it's at zero and then we go past zero and now it's the opposite of up here now in terms of how to smooth your animation in maya we're going to use the power of the graph editor let's start with our main node i'll scroll down to left right hit a to make sure i'm framed all and then maybe i can move around a little bit maybe i can scale with shift and alt so you can see it already looks pretty smooth but if i start selecting these keys it's going to show these tangent handles okay so every time I select a key, I'm seeing a tangent handle. And the trick with tangent handles is that you don't want them intersecting. So you don't want a tangent handle that looks like this because one part of the tangent handle is on this side of the curve and this side of the tangent handle is on this side of the curve. We want a pretty equal distance of space between the curve and the tangent handle on both sides of the tangent handle. And as a matter of fact, we're, we actually did a pretty good job of that. On this keyframe, the tangent handles are on this side of the curve. And on this keyframe, both tangent handles are on this side of the curve. But it's okay because they're both on the same side, right? These are both on this side and both of these handles are on this side. It would only be a problem if they were opposite because then we get this bump in the curve, which is gonna look like some weirdness in our actual animation. And if you wanted to absolutely make sure you have the smoothest curve possible in this situation, we could just delete them. Now it's smooth. And we would continue doing that for each control curve. So you can see we got a bunch here, but we're gonna take it one at a time. We'll click on translate X, there's no curve there. We know that we don't have any translations in this control, it's all rotations. So let's start with rotate X. We'll see that this comes up, but then it kind of flatlines here. If I click and drag here, I can actually scrub through my animation instead of scrubbing through down here. I can also do that here. And I'm just watching this animation because I don't think I want it to flatline. Maybe I actually want it to peak around here. So I can box select this keyframe to give me my tangent handle. And then I can box select the tangent handle. And then right now I have my rotate tool. I want my move tool. And just like in the channel editor with this tangent handle selected, anywhere in the graph editor, I can click and hold my middle mouse button. And now I have control over that tangent handle. So again, we're gonna box select a key, which will bring up the tangent handles. Then we can box select one of those tangent handles, switch to your move tool. I usually hit W, which is the hotkey for the move tool. And then click and hold your middle mouse button in and we can move that tangent handle, which as you can see, moves the actual tangent. So again, we don't want some crazy curve like this. We want it nice and smooth. We want equal distance between the tangent handles and the curves as much as possible because that is what's gonna give us this smoother curve. You can see down here too, we kind of flatline. So I kind of want to overshoot this. So I'll select this key, select the tangent handle, middle mouse click and drag it. So now I'm shaping that curve. Same thing here. There's not a lot of space here, but a lot of space here. Let's straighten that out. Same thing here, straighten it out. Select the key, select a handle, middle mouse and straighten it out. And then we'll move on to Y Z, Z we actually have stuff. And this looks a lot similar to our main control, left, right, where we just had to delete them because they were pretty much already fine. If I go back to this middle control, back to rotate Z, and I look at these tangent handles, most of them are pretty much fine. None of them are really intersecting. So instead of deleting them, I'm just gonna leave them because they're already smooth. They've already done their job. Now we'll look at the squash and stretch. And I just wanna play this back because it's weird to have two different sized bumps. So something we forgot to do last week in our animation is set our squash and stretch back to zero down here. So this isn't necessarily smoothing the animation, but I can correct animation in the graph editor. So now thankfully these two bumps look the same, except for their values. So maybe I can select that and drag it down a bit, right? 
So, so that that's really hard to see in the viewport, but it's easy to see in the graph editor, right? Maya gives us many ways to see our errors. It gives us many ways to see how our animation is working. It shows us information in a lot of different ways so that we can understand it better as animators. Moving on to the next control, this top control, translate X, we know we're not translating anything. We know it's all in rotations. So the same thing, select the keyframe, drag that tangent handle, get a nice smooth curve. Same thing here. We don't like to flatline because anything that flatlines is dead and animation is the illusion of life. So we don't want anything dead in our animation. You can see that once you get the hang of this, once you get the hang of the hotkeys and everything, it goes pretty fast. So nothing in Y, same thing in Z. These all look fine to me. You know, you can maybe, if you're really finicky about it, you could do that. I'm just gonna leave them. So I'll set that back to auto. Looking at the base of the straw, that looks pretty good to me. I don't think we're gonna see any major problems there. Let's look at this where we were dragging it. And that curve's looking a little funky, so I know that's gonna be in Rotate X. Yeah, so this is this is gonna need some work. So we're just getting things nice and smooth. And we're getting rid of these flatter lines here. We're gonna overshoot them. We're gonna get that nice smooth curve. Nothing in Y, nothing in Z. Now, when I play this back, it might not look that much different, but it is a lot smoother. And I guarantee that if you have an animation that's really jittery, really poppy, maybe it looks laggy, doing this smoothing in the graph editor is gonna really help your animation. So guys, I hope that helped. I know we didn't go over tangent types like stepped or linear or auto or anything like that, but I think it's easier to find that information than learning the artistic side of how to smooth your animation using this graph editor tool. If you learned something, if you enjoyed this tutorial, I would really appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and come hang out next week because I'm going over my top three hotkeys for animators. They might surprise you. Thanks again, guys. I'll see you next week. Bye.